These are the Chat City interviews from 103.2 Preston FM. And uh, it's nice to welcome my next guest into the studio. Been a very busy morning this morning, I can tell you, here at Chat City. Uh, but lovely to welcome my next guest into the studio. And uh, says he, as he looks for all his bits of paper on the desk. <laughs> and my next guest is Lee Wolf Crook. So, Lee Wolf, a very good morning to you. Good morning. That's right. If I can get you nice and close to the microphone. And, uh, Lee Wolf, you're talking to me about dyspraxia, and I, I've got to admit, as I just did to you off further, apart from what I've been looking up over the last couple of days, I know so little about dyspraxia. And it, is that what you find that people do know? So before I ask you to tell us, in fact, what it is, do you find that dyspraxia is a word that people have heard, but so me- so few people know what exactly it is? It's very ignorant. Not many people have heard of it. They heard of uh, Asperger's, they heard of autism. They've heard of Tourette's, ADHD, dyslexia, dys- possibly dyscalculia and dysgraphia. But dyspraxia is very much ignorant. It's... Uh, you try to explain it to someone and it's very difficult to explain because it's not got a box that you can fit into. Mm. Yeah, I, c- I can understand that. And what, so what is it? I mean, what, what are the symptoms or...? Well, dyspraxia, when I, when I explain it to people, I explain it like, uh, imagine that you're drunk without the alcohol. Mm. Right? And you have difficulty with, like, balance. You have difficulty with uh, processing thought. You have difficulty with writing your name, carrying your shoelaces, the figly little stuff, organisation. As I've just said uh, before, it's emotional, physical and mental. And so I I can go on and give a list. Uh, yeah, so, 10 uh, pages about how it can right. affect but it's also a positive thing as well you, you know I, a, uh, quite a lot of people me myself included we see uh, dyspraxia not just as a disability but more as a gift because there are a lot of positivities that come with having this sort of disability right right and were, were you born with dyspraxia? Uh, I was, you know, uh, when I was a child, dyspraxia was hardly heard of. It was a uh, clumsy cow syndrome, right. it was called, when right. I was younger. And uh, I was uh, statemented. I found out about it in 1988 when I was nine years old. So, so the statement was uh, a special educational needs statement. At yes, school. it was. Yeah, right. Okay. And and so, what did they then put into the statement? Then was that that you could have extra support at school, or yeah, did uh, you attend a, a special needs school? Well, no, I, I actually attended a normal school. Uh, went to Saint James in Curley. Right, and. I must tell you, I had a brilliant time at uh, St. James's. <laughs> Good. Brilliant. Good. My headmaster, Mr. Norcross, he was very, very supportive. In fact, most of the teachers was very supportive. I still have nightmares about the uh, infant teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I, I'm, I must say that they helped, uh, you know, they helped develop my... Uh, Natural strengths. Right. And so, where I had difficulty writing, they caused me, gave me extra time to write, they gave me extra lessons to be able to write. Right. And so, they didn't just cause me from reading at an higher level than, say, the next person. Mm. And so, they didn't make me feel as though I was different. You know, they allowed me to be part of the... They, they didn't allow me to use it as an excuse not to do something. And and that must have been so important. Well, it, it was... Uh, I find a lot of 
well, when I say a lot, I find some people, they use their disability as an excuse, as a crutch. And yes, having a disability is uh, difficult, and it's mm. a, it is a pain. But if you allow it to control yourself, control yourself negative, then yes, it is going to be negative. But if you allow to see it in a positive light and say, well, okay, I'm dyspractic, so what? I'm still me. And uh, and and that that is a brilliant way to look at it. I'm I'm sure some people must struggle in not being able to look at it in a positive way. Do you? Yeah, there is that time when it is difficult. Uh, I mean, having a speech impediment, uh, I sometimes find it difficult to be positive that I can't speak my name properly, let alone write my name. And so I found when I met people like me who are dyspractic, who are Asperger's, who a part of this neurodiverse spectrum, mm. I find they can understand me where I'm coming from. And when I'm down, when I'm going off on one or ranting about something, they think, oh, it's only uh, Ashley, it's only Lee Wolf talking again. Ignore him. He'll get over it. <laughs> so it, it, it's, I find you, you get the support of the people when you need to. Mm. And I know some amazing people who... I've not only got dyspraxia, I know people, Asperger's, autistic, uh, ADHD, uh, dyscalculia, you know, I yes, know people quite within... a few of the different conditions. Yeah, within the spectrum, so... And most of them, nine times ten, they are really genuine, clever people. Mm. You, you know, so, and they inspired me to be a lot more than what I would have been without the dyspraxia. Right. And what about, I mean, uh, for anybody listening or uh, anybody who has dyspraxia, are, are there um, support groups around? Are there... Well, there, there is... Uh, I, I used to do the uh, Preston group, which I will be starting later this year. Right. Uh, a friend of mine, Janet Taylor, she does the Manchester group. And you also got the Dyspraxia Foundation, which I found it is for people a great start to to get to know about dyspraxia. I also find it's mainly aimed more at children and parents. Right. Which is why we need more adults to work together and to come to these support groups. Mm. So hopefully, if you were looking at setting up a support group, that's what it would be. It would be for the individuals and and a support group. Yeah. So, are you hoping that maybe you will be able to start this one in Preston then? I'm hoping so. With, with luck, it will be September time. Do we know how many people suffer from dyspraxia? Roughly, uh, without uh, going online and googling it. Yeah. Is, between 5 to 10% of the population. Right. And without uh, roughly, and this is uh, about 25% of the population suffer from uh, NG, neurodiverse. So there is a good proportion of people out there. Right. And and as I as I said, until... I, I It was a word I'd often heard, but until meeting you and you explaining... Uh, I didn't know very much about dyspraxia. Do you think? Do you think there should be more publicity? Do you think it is something that should be talked about more so that uh, I've, people understand? I've, I think it should be talked about positively. When people talk about it, it's I find it's more negative about well, being dyspraxic, they can't do this, they can't do that. Or they have difficulty doing mm. such and such. When really we should also be talking, well, a dyspraxic person is creative. Mm. You know, he's got a great imagination. They're generally empathic towards people. You know, it should be more focused on the positive 
Yes, you, rather than look rather, at the negative yeah. to actually focus on the positive and yeah. to recognise the person as an individual. I, I, exactly. Because uh, the first thing we should see is the person and I, not exactly. the condition. Exactly. People often use labels. Yes. And I find being labelled is a lot more arming than having yes. a disability. It's people, when they see your dyspraxia, they'll say, oh, well, he's got learning difficulties, mm. he's slow, he's this. And the truth of the matter is, I don't have a learning difficulty. I can learn. Yes. I don't have special needs. My needs are the same as others. I just want people to be a bit more understanding. Right. Okay. Well, can I thank you for coming in this morning? And maybe, maybe when you know, you know, maybe that the group's got it set up in press, and maybe you can let us know, and then we can put it again out on air. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. Uh, get people to make contact with you. Yeah, if you could, yeah. It'd be we'll, brilliant. We'll, we'll definitely do that for you. So, thank you, uh, Lee Wolf, for coming in this morning. Thank you very thank much you. for having me. Thanks for listening to our podcasts. But don't forget, Chat City is live weekdays from 10 till noon on 103.2 Preston FM.